The race is on. The U.S. Air Force just announced plans to choose a design for the next generation air dominance fighter in 2024. And that means all these firms that have been competing to field technology for this sixth generation jet now get to compete to field the jet itself. But nobody's starting from scratch. America's top three aerospace defense contractors, Boeing, Lockheed Martin, and Northrop Grumman, have been quietly pitching sixth gen designs for years. Let's talk about what we know about NGAD and which of these companies seems to have the inside track. I'm Alex Hollings, and this is Air Power. Now, before we get started this week, I want to take a minute to let you guys know that my buddy and F-35 pilot, Hazard Lee, has a new book out. I've actually known Hazard for some time now. We've worked together on a bunch of stories over the years, and he's even written a bunch of pieces for Sandbox News. And since this is not a paid plug, I can tell you unequivocally that I don't think there's a better spokesperson for the F-35, the U.S. Air Force, or fighter pilots in general than Hazard. Now, we've talked in the past about the massive cognitive load associated with being a fighter pilot. You have to keep track of dozens of gauges and readouts, sometimes that are giving you contradictory information while flying at 500 plus miles per hour through unfamiliar territory full of telephone pole size missiles that are gunning for you. And as a result, fighter pilot culture has developed around practices and processes that you can use to make very rapid but sound decisions. And that's what Hazard's book, The Art of Clear Thinking, is all about. It explains these processes to you in a way that allows you to incorporate them into your everyday life. And I know it's a great book because I got the chance to read it way before it ever went to print. In fact, on the hardcover, you can even find a quote from me on the back, which I really appreciate. I asked Hazard what I could do to help make his book successful, and he sent me a bunch of signed book plates that he took up with him into an F-16 and flew supersonic with. So all of these book plates have exceeded Mach 1. Now, I've never really done a giveaway before, so I'll make this as simple as possible. If you want one of these signed supersonic book plates, all you've got to do is follow me on Twitter, order Hazard's book, and then tag me in proof that you ordered it. Or if you buy it at a bookstore, you can just tag me in a picture of you with the book. Either way, I'll pick six people at random and slip into your DMs to get your address, and I'll send you one of these signed book plates. All right, enough about books. Let's talk planes. Because according to a recent statement by Air Force Secretary Frank Kendall, at least two firms have already been actively working with Air Force engineers on the design for the next generation air dominance fighter. And with the recent revelation that the Air Force now intends to choose a winning design in 2024, many have found themselves wondering just how far along this program may actually be. After all, it's already been nearly three years since Air Force officials first disclosed the fact that a full-sized NGAD technology demonstrator had not only already flown, but even broken records. What records? We still don't know. Now, it's very important to understand that a technology demonstrator is not the same thing as a prototype. A technology demonstrator may look nothing like the final aircraft. It's just a platform used to demonstrate or test new technologies. And now we know that despite years worth of effort going into NGAD technologies, a final design has not been chosen yet. And while it seems likely that America's top three defense aerospace contractors, Boeing, Northrop Grumman, and Lockheed Martin, would each have a dog in this fight, based on Frank Kendall's statements, it seems as though two of them may have more of an inside track than the third. Now, I'm recording this on Thursday, May 25th, and just a few days ago on Monday, Frank Kendall spoke at a defense writers group breakfast. When asked about the NGAD, he said, and I quote, I was out at Wright-Patterson Air Force Base and I saw a government engineer who was very capable working directly with one of the two contractors. He was on one of the teams interfacing with them on the designs. Now that certainly sounds like one of the big three is already out of this fight. But before we can talk about what these firms are proposing, we need to establish some context about what the NGAD program is and what it intends to field. And to do that, we need to look at what's flying today. 
Lockheed Martin's F-35 Lightning II, also commonly known as the Joint Strike Fighter, is currently the world's most technologically advanced tactical aircraft, thanks to a combination of stealth technologies and sensor-fusing onboard computers that allow the fighter to operate inside contested airspace with near impunity, all while soaking up data and streamlining it into an easy-to-manage pilot interface that not only makes the F-35 a potent threat in any combat scenario, but has even been known to increase the lethality of older jets that fly alongside it, thanks to its ability to provide such heightened degrees of situational awareness. Lockheed Martin's F-22 Raptor, which entered service a year before the F-35's first test flight, doesn't offer the same degree of sensor-fusing awareness. But what the Raptor lacks in computing power, it makes up for in brute force. While the F-35's performance could be considered practically sluggish compared to Cold War hot rods like the F-15 Eagle, the F-22 delivers blistering speeds, an aerobatic maneuverability that's unparalleled in America's inventory. That, combined with the smallest radar return of any fighter ever to fly, and a suite of advanced avionic systems that are designed specifically for air-to-air -air combat, all makes the F-22 the top-ranked air superiority fighter in the world today. And the aircraft that will emerge from the next generation air dominance program is expected to eclipse the capabilities offered by both. So let's talk about what we know about NGAD so far. While there's a great deal of focus on the crude fighter platform that will emerge from this effort, it's really just one element of the overall program. According to the Air Force, NGAD will produce a family of systems that includes an advanced piloted fighter and a number of AI-enabled drones meant to fly alongside it and take their cues from the human operator. Now, obviously, specifics about the design aren't available because a final design hasn't been chosen, but countless official renders out of the Air Force and defense contractors alike all suggest a sleek design with smaller or completely removed standing vertical tail surfaces. And that suggests this new fighter will place a larger emphasis on stealth than on maneuverability. Now, as we've come to expect of cutting-edge stealth aircraft, the NGAD fighter is going to be expensive likely more than $200 million per airframe. But the Air Force only intends to buy around 200 of them. And while a limited production run became a serious problem for the F-22 Raptor, the NGAD program is operating quite a bit differently. Thanks to the constellation of drone wingmen that will fly alongside, a single NGAD fighter will be able to fill the roles that used to be filled by multiple legacy fighters. Now, the Air Force currently plans to buy at least 1,000 drone wingmen, with plans for two to fly alongside each of those 200 NGAD fighters and two more alongside each of 300 new Block 4 F-35s in the future. In other words, we're not talking about 200 new NGAD fighters, but rather 1,500 advanced new aircraft, with pilots on board just 500 of them. Now, there may well be a number of smaller firms pursuing the NGAD design contract that we're just not aware of at this point, but there are three massive defense firms with their names already tied to this effort, though a little indirectly. In August of 2022, the U.S. Air Force awarded five contracts, each worth nearly a billion dollars for continued development on adaptive cycle engine systems to power this new stealth fighter to come. Now, two of the firms that received these contracts are well-known engine designers, Pratt & Whitney and General Electric. Both companies also have publicly disclosed and very promising adaptive cycle engine efforts underway, with GE's XA100 engine said to provide 20% more thrust, 30% more range, and up to 50% more loiter time over the F-35's current Pratt & Whitney F-135 power plant. But the other three firms to receive these $975 million next-generation adaptive propulsion program contracts are more frequently associated with aircraft design instead. Boeing, Lockheed Martin, and Northrop Grumman. The inclusion of these three contractors raised a number of big questions about this NGAP program and how it fits into the future NGAD plans. 
While it's certainly possible that these firms could be throwing their hats into the ring to develop and produce new engines, it's a lot more likely that these contract awards were meant to allow these three companies to continue work integrating new adaptive cycle engines into their existing NGAD fighter designs. And if that is the case, then it certainly would seem as though these contractors have designs that are a lot more mature than 3D renders in some press releases. So with that in mind, let's talk about these three firms and what we already know about their sixth generation fighter proposals, starting with the likely frontrunner, Lockheed Martin. After all, Lockheed Martin is the only firm in this race that already has stealth fighters in service, and those stealth fighters, despite being years or decades old, remain dominant even as newer competitors reach service. Lockheed Martin's legendary Skunk Works division, established by aerospace giant Kelly Johnson, has been responsible for some of the most groundbreaking military aircraft ever to fly, including the world's first operational stealth aircraft, the F-117 Nighthawk, the high-flying U-2 spy plane that is still in service today, and the fastest jet in history, the SR-71 Blackbird. Now, over the years, Lockheed Martin has dropped several not-so-subtle hints about their interest in fielding a sixth-generation fighter, starting before the F-22 even entered service back in 1999 with their X-44 Manta. Now, the Manta was a tailless delta-wing aircraft based on the F-22 Raptor, but meant to test the feasibility of an aircraft that relied on 3D thrust vector control to compensate for the removal of those control surfaces. Today, it's pretty tough to deny the similarities between the Manta concept and renders we've seen for 6th generation fighters. Though the Manta isn't the only 6th gen fighter design we've seen out of Lockheed Martin over the years. Back in 2012, they released a calendar to journalists that showed a different advanced fighter design that really looked like it borrowed some design elements from Northrop Grumman's YF-23 that we'll talk about more in a few minutes. Now, that design would surface again in promotional materials released in the years that followed, including in a video they put out in 2017. But later that same year, Lockheed Martin released the first renders of a different 6th gen design that really looks to harken back to that Manta aesthetic. That design appears to be carried over into more recent renders released by Lockheed Martin, including graphics released to promote their LMXT tanker concept just last year. And then, to take a step out from official announcements, in October of 2021, images surfaced on the internet of a very unusual and stealthy design sitting on a trailer at Lockheed Martin's Hellendale Radar Cross-Section Measurement Facility. And that raised some real eyebrows, because Lockheed Martin is no stranger to keeping secrets, and it seems crazy that they would leave this aircraft out in the parking lot where just anybody could take pictures, unless... They meant for it to happen, but maybe that's just my own tinfoil hat thinking. And while we're on the topic of leaks that seem borderline intentional, back on February 4th of 2022, Tyler Rogaway at the Warzone published satellite pictures taken by Planet Labs of a very unusual looking aircraft sitting on the tarmac of Area 51. Like Lockheed Martin, Area 51 is no stranger to keeping secrets. In fact, Lockheed's Kelly Johnson established Area 51 in the first place. They certainly would know when satellites were overhead, and this begs the question, why leave this aircraft out even if under a fairly translucent cover? Now, there's nothing official tying those images to Lockheed Martin, but these pictures are often brought up when discussing Lockheed's 6th gen concepts. But it's not all good news for LM because the incredible cost overruns associated with both the F-22 and F-35 may really hurt their chances at securing another advanced fighter contract. And the Air Force wanting to make sure its prime contractors remain funded to continue competing with each other might also encourage officials and lawmakers alike to look elsewhere for America's next stealth fighter. And while Lockheed Martin may be the only American company with experience getting a stealth fighter into service, it is not the only American company with a great deal of low observable chops. 
Northrop Grumman, previously just Northrop, has been competing with Lockheed Martin, previously just Lockheed, since the very inception of stealth. In fact, back when the Air Force first started testing stealth aircraft's radar return and they realized that the pole that they used to hold the models produced a way bigger return than the aircraft themselves, Northrop split the bill with Lockheed to build a new stealth pole for the testing. And while their XST stealth technology demonstrator design would ultimately lose out to Lockheed's hopeless diamond, Northrop would go on to field the world's first heavy payload stealth bomber the B-2 Spirit, as well as its forthcoming replacement, the B-21 Raider. And as you might expect, they also have their sights set on the NGAD contract. And while they're known for their stealth bomber successes, Northrop Grumman also has an impressive stealth fighter pedigree. Their entrant into the Advanced Tactical Fighter competition back in 1991, known as the YF-23, has achieved near-mythical status in aviation circles in the years since the competition. According to many first-hand accounts, the YF-23 was able to match or even surpass a number of the YF-22's capabilities during their fly-off, but confidence in Northrop's ability to deliver on time and on budget was extremely low at the time because of a whole slew of high-profile controversies in the years immediately preceding it. But because of the YF-23's solid performance during the competition, the aircraft is often seen as one of aviation's greatest what-ifs. And while I personally believe that the YF-22 and subsequent F-22 Raptor was the right choice, it's hard to deny that the YF-23 is one of the few, or perhaps only, fighters that could directly compete with and consistently beat the mighty Raptor. And when I say beat, I don't mean in lopsided training exercises with the rules of engagement stacked against it, like you often hear about with aircraft like the Eurofighter or even the F-16. I mean, the YF-23 would genuinely have been the greatest air superiority fighter ever to fly if it had won, just as the F-22 is today. And of course, Northrop Grumman has been hinting at its interest in fielding a new stealth fighter over the years as well. Back in 2016, they released an ad during the Super Bowl that showed new renders of a tailless stealth fighter design alongside a bevy of other advanced aircraft concepts. And then in 2021, Northrop Grumman released another advertisement showing renders of even more new aircraft concepts, this time including a different and very unusual aircraft shown sitting in a hangar. Now, that render and the timing of the ad in particular led many to speculate that Northrop was not just making art for art's sake, but may have actually been showing us a glimpse of their sixth-generation fighter concept. It does look very large, but because of internal payload storage and increased range, we expect this new aircraft to be pretty large. And then, in new ads released just recently, Northrop has shown that same aircraft design again with a few slightly different angles. And last year, Northrop Grumman CEO Kathy Warden went on record during a call with investment analysts to say that she felt the firm's success with the B-21 Raider may give them an edge in the hunt for the NGAD contract. I'll quote her here. As we think about sixth generation aircraft, we're in the process of building the first of those, the B-21, and that's given us some fantastic experience and lessons that we believe we can apply to other sixth generation aircraft, and so we're positioned as a competitor. And to Ms. Warden's point, a Congressional Research Service report published in 2022 about the NGAD program specifically cites the B-21 when talking about how this new fighter may take a different approach than previous air superiority platforms. I'll quote it here. A larger aircraft, the size of a B-21, may not maneuver like a fighter, but that large an aircraft carrying a directed energy weapon, with multiple engines making substantial electrical power for that weapon, could ensure that no enemy flies in a large amount of airspace. That would achieve air dominance. Of course, the fact that Northrop Grumman has already secured an extremely lucrative contract for the B-21 Raider may actually hinder its chances at winning the NGAD contract as well. If Northrop Grumman were to win, it would mean one firm would be building all of America's new fighters and bombers, at least until a contract was awarded for the Navy's FAXX fighter, but nonetheless, it could still potentially spread Northrop pretty thin. 
And that brings us to Boeing, which may not be the first company you think of when it comes to new stealth fighters, but believe it or not, their low observable routes actually stretch back even further than either Lockheed's or Northrop's. More than a decade before Have Blue would lead to the F-117, Boeing was already testing a now largely forgotten aircraft that, by many standards, was the world's first truly stealth platform. The Model 853-21, Quiet Bird. You see, today, when we talk about the beginning of the stealth revolution, we usually reference one of two people, either Soviet mathematician Pyotr Ufimsev, who published a paper in 1971 talking about how you could theoretically calculate the radar return of two-dimensional triangle shapes, or to the work of Dennis Overholser at Lockheed Skunk Works just a few years later, who devised a way to take Ufimsev's work out of the two-dimensional realm and into the three-dimensional realm, making it possible to calculate the radar return of a stealth aircraft design without having to actually build it and stick it in front of a radar array to find out. But nine years before Ufimsev's paper was published, Boeing was experimenting with the Quiet Bird using that good old-fashioned guess-and-check method. They tried different design shapes and construction materials to produce the smallest radar return possible by literally sticking it in front of a radar array and finding out. But they were too far ahead of their time, and the Army just didn't see any value in a stealth aircraft, as insane as that might sound. So all that work eventually went into the AGM-86 air-launched cruise missile instead. And then in 1997, Boeing merged with McDonnell Douglas and got renewed low-observable credibility as a result. You see, McDonnell Douglas had been frustrated that their stealth fighter proposal was passed over without even getting to fly against the YF-23 and YF-22. So they went ahead and just hired Alan Weichmann from Lockheed Skunk Works to head up their new Phantom Works division, starting on low-observable projects. Under Weichmann's leadership, McDonnell Douglas's Phantom Works developed and flew their YF-118G Bird of Prey stealth technology demonstrator entirely within the secretive confines of Area 51, and work continued in earnest after the company merged with Boeing. And during that same period of time, McDonnell Douglas and then Boeing after the merger worked directly with NASA on the X-36 tailless fighter agility research aircraft, which was a 28% to scale technology demonstrator aimed at developing the means to fly a stealth aircraft without, you guessed it, standing vertical tail surfaces. By the year 2000, Boeing's X-32 prototype took to the sky and would go on to compete against Lockheed Martin's X-35 for the Joint Strike Fighter competition, a competition it would ultimately lose. But it seems all but certain that Boeing has continued work on its stealth fighter design concepts, especially with production on the F-A-18 Super Hornet now expected to sunset in 2025. Back in 2013, Boeing released its first new renders of a sixth-generation fighter, but those images were tied to the Navy's FAXX program rather than the Air Force's NGAD. Now, like all the others we've talked about, it was a tailless Delta Wing design, but unlike the others, it also included a pair of canards forward of the wings, sort of similar to China's J-20. But by 2016, when new renders were revealed, those canards were gone, but the rest of the aircraft's basic shape was still there. Now, Boeing really has had their fair share of contract controversies and issues with defense programs like the KC-46 Pegasus over the years. But with Lockheed Martin already contracted to build and sustain F-35s for literally decades to come, and Northrop Grumman already on the hook for at least 100 B-21 Raiders, Boeing's Super Hornets are going out of production, and it looks like F-15 EX orders won't go on for very long either. So, Boeing may be well-positioned for this contract, simply in the interest of distribution of defense contracts and production load, not to mention keeping all three of America's biggest aerospace contractors in the fight for future competitions. Now, of course, that doesn't mean Boeing would just win by default. They still have to field a winning design, but that's certainly a consideration for the Pentagon. So who's really going to win the NGAD contract? According to the Air Force, this competition is still very much up for grabs. In fact, Earlier this week, an Air Force spokesperson said that they had yet to receive a single complete proposal 
for an NGAD platform. It's also really important to remember that while one company will ultimately be chosen as the primary, it's all but certain that the other large firms will be involved in the ultimate production and operation of this new fighter. In the case of the F-35, for instance, Lockheed Martin may have won the contract, but Northrop Grumman actually builds the center fuselage of the aircraft and the AN-APG-81 radar and so forth. In other words, this competition isn't really for all the marbles, but it is for most of them. And while there's no guarantee that the fighter that emerges from the NGAD program will look like any of the renders that we've looked at today, one thing does seem evident. This new NGAD fighter will be nothing like anything we've ever seen fill that fighter role before. And on that ends another edition of Air Power from Sandbox News. I'm Alex Hollings. Make sure to swing by sandboxnews.com today and every day for all the latest in news, entertainment, and motivation from all around the force. If you got anything out of today's video, make sure to click like and subscribe down below and leave me a comment so I know what I should cover next. And of course, don't forget to tap on that bell icon so you never miss a drop from Sandbox News.